Hey guys, Brian here from Five to Go, and I am back with Ben. He is uh, he's the guy who has this big, huge, massive, custom New Horizons Majestic rig. And uh, we did a tour of this a few months ago, uh, back in March, I think. Back yeah. About six months ago, March or April. And uh, we did a big tour of the inside. Uh, and then we kind of teased uh, that there was a lot of stuff going on in this very large bay down here. Uh, that's today. We're going to dig into this bay. It's going to be three episodes. In this first one, we're talking about all of the storage stuff. So the reason we didn't really dig into this uh, earlier this year is because it wasn't done. I wasn't done yet. Yeah, I mean, he literally finished it about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at all the storage. And then after that, the two episodes after this are going to be all about his networking setup. And then all about the ridiculous power things he has going on. So first up with this one, let's do storage. Alrighty, so uh, just so a uh, recap here, uh, this is quite large. It is 50 feet? 50 feet. 50 feet long, uh, and actually have our rig right next to it. We're uh, mooch docking at one of his friend's houses, and he has a buddy plug, but that's for a future episode. Uh, so let's go ahead and just crack into it. Just go ahead and open this thing up, and uh, we'll see what kind of storage uh, madness is going on in here. So when we last saw this, there was nothing on the floor, right? You had done the toolboxes, and that was kind of about it. Right, I had just gotten the toolbox in, but I hadn't actually like finished organizing it or yeah. anything. It was, most of it was out way over here, just sitting out in right. a frame. <laughs> yeah, we hid it in the back of the truck and <laughs> just kept it off camera. Since then, you have added some more ride, uh, what is the official name for these? I believe it's a cargo slide tray. Cargo slide something tray. Something to that We'll effect. go with that, we'll yeah. go with that. So go ahead and, uh, so you've got that and you've got a bunch of uh, husky boxes on it. Yes. So let's go ahead and pull that out and take a look at this. Now if you remember, uh, what was it, a year and a half ago, you were in an Imagine 2800 BH. Yes. And uh, you had custom built a wood slider. We still to this day get comments on that video about just apply soap to it and like all these oh, yeah. different ways to keep it from squeaking. Tr trust me, I tried a bunch of different things. <laughs> I tried a lot of those comments, but uh, yeah. when they did it this time, I just went with this the This is the solution. One. <laughs> it's, oh, well. it's lovely. So you got yes. the one that pulls out both sides, right? So the reason we went with the one that went out both sides, even though we're not actually going out both sides, is that it extends out further. It extends out 80% instead of 60%. Okay. You do lose a little bit of weight capacity. Okay. Uh, the 60% one way is, I believe, 800 pounds. This wow. one's only 500 pounds. Only 500 pounds. That's a lot of weight. They don't need 500 pounds on here. Yeah. Uh, at least I hope not. So we can uh, see, I mean, this thing comes out super, super far. Like, yes. You can almost get all of the bay, all of the bins all the way out the door. Right. So All but this last row, basically. Yeah. Um, and, and then you found totes that fit really well. Yes, yes. So, so walk, the, walk us through these. We don't need a, like a <laughs> tote no. by tote, but you no. are, I was telling you earlier today, I very much appreciate the labeling. <clears throat> yep. Starlink, Starlink, drill and impact drive. Like they're all, everything's nicely labeled, which I love. Yep. Um, so what's, uh, what drew you to these other than the fact that they fit? These are weatherproof, which is nice. Um, you know, if it happens to start raining while I'm working on something, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Although that really wasn't the big thing. I, I like the fact that you can open one side and they hinge open so yeah. they retain the lid. Um, you said these did have six handles? There were... They did. They have handles that come on the side. I took them off because they really defeat the purpose of having yeah. this easy access. Yeah. Plus, to open that, you'd have to you know pop this off and then yep. turn it off. It just would have... It was annoying. I kept them, but... They don't yeah. have the handles. But the, I like the way that they stack together. Yes. So you have these longer ones here that are sitting in the direction of the tray, and then you've got these smaller ones that sit crossways. Yeah. And because of the way the lid is made, if they all just kind of snap in and hold onto each other. Now, on travel days, you don't strap these down or anything. Not at all. They just they stay perfectly they survive. fine. And so uh, I think to show anything else, we got to crawl in there. Yeah, we kind of right. do. All right, so this is coming in from the other side. So there is a, uh, this is a freezer. Yes. And you have another slider on this side. Right. So, um, so this is another one of the Moride trays. Yeah. Uh, it, they actually bill this as a freezer fridge slide tray. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty much exactly the right size. Yes. It, we got real lucky here. I mean, not real lucky. I measured about, <laughs> about 80 times. Right. This is also a 200% extend. So oh. this actually extends oh. out. That's why there's two rails. Yes, yeah, it extends out. The only limit right now is the cord for the uh, refrigerator. I don't think I you can do, pull can't do that one-handed. Both at the same time. <laughs> All right, you do that one. 
There we go. So yeah, it can go. Holy cow! Here, we'll just plug the fridge for right now to do that. Holy moly! Look at that thing. Yeah. So. Jeez. If I need to get in here, yeah, it's easy enough. I can duck under or hop over yeah. this rail and get in here and work on, like, if I need to change the water, uh -huh. which, yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, so storage things like this, yes, uh, a lot of people saw in the tour video of your 2800, because you did stuff like that and you had the pipes running this way and you had, and had the uh, drills, drills in it and stuff. And stuff. Uh, this is a fantastic, it's a cheap material, yep. it's just PVC, and mm -hmm. you can cut it to whatever length, size, shape, whatever you need. It's awesome. It's such a great use of space. Yep. And then you use the little end caps here so they don't fall down and hit the rails. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I keep my levels in here, I keep my torque wrench in here. So you have the, the like, broom holder uh, utility. <laughs> yeah, those here. are those, the command, the command broom holder yeah. units. Um, Actually holding a broom. Literally holding a broom on the most expensive mount you could possibly yes. use. <laughs> yes, we joke that this is the, the, yeah. I don't remember exactly the cost of each of those units, but suffice it to say, not. It's not. a multi-thousand dollar broom holder. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Our socket's up here on the wall, yep. which is nice. So it's easy to just pull those off. This was actually the same rail that I used in mm -hmm. the Imagine um, that I had hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, that was like right above yeah. the door. Yeah, and so I just, I had room to go here, so I went this way. Yep, and then you got a flashlight, and you've got a socket for your this, lug nuts. This is actually the right one for the lug nuts for the tires, so nice. I can just pull that out easily. And yep, but you have a full-size toolbox. Full-size tool chest we here, don't, yep. We don't see that very often in RVs. Also, really? we have a full-size adult male. <laughs> yeah, I'm in here, I mean... And I could be in there. We could have four or five people in here. It's, uh, easily, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, there's a fair amount of room. It feels weird when you're trying to work your way around all this stuff sometimes, because... Right. It was uh, easier without the rails <laughs> in the way. I do yes, remember that. that yeah. is true. The rails oh. have definitely made and it made in case a you're, uh, but... In case you're wondering, yes... That's a weed whacker. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes spent, weeds we, just need to be whacked. <laughs> this, this is true. We, we, we've we spent some time at some state parks, and they don't always take the best care. Yep. And I had a situation where we had like three feet of weeds right next to the rig, and I'm like, nah, I'm done with this. You know, I can't even get into my bay, my bay over here. Yeah. So I just went and grabbed a weed whacker, and I'm like, That's... just take care of it. Works with the batteries I have already, so. So yeah. you just have loops up there and then carabiners? <clears throat> yep, loops with carabiners just nice. screwed into the. Yep. Very cool. Okay, so back to the toolboxes. Yes. So um, full regu size, regular full-size toolbox. Full-size right? toolbox. Again, measured 80 times, make sure I found the right one, yep. did a bunch of research. Um, this one, of course, it like most of these chests come with uh, casters, mm -hmm. I just didn't put them on. Right. Uh, what is I did it bolted? Yeah, what I did okay. instead is I have four bolts that go all the way through the floor down to the outside of the rig. Gracious. Because uh, this is mostly foam. Uh, okay. here. There, there's, yeah. there's like some, you know, hard material, you know, for the actual that, you know, for the actual stability of it. But it's um, a bunch of closed cell foam yeah. in there and then some you know, other, you know, barrier type materials. So you have to, uh, you really have to sandwich yeah. for a bolt. You can't use a screw. A screw right. won't hold right. Or like a big lag screw or anything. Yeah, it's, I it's tried a lag light. bolt and then I'm like, this isn't really working. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to New Horizons and I'm like, can you tell me how this thing is built, please? <laughs> and they gave me this, the, the, you know, he told me how to do, how it was built. And he's like, nice. yeah, I, I would recommend you use a bolt. So nice. and we actually, uh, you do the same thing for the rails, right? <clears throat> yep. Same, same exact thing. So you can see, I use these giant fender washers here with a bolt yep. through same type of deal on the other side, except for I'm using a nylock. Okay. Uh, yeah. nut. So don't back off. So they, they don't back off. Nice. Right? Awesome. Yep. Alrighty, and uh, you've got uh, all of the batteries in the world. There's a lot of uh, discussion on our Discord server about your, um, we'll call it a uh, variety of my, battery my types. My variety of batteries. <laughs> yeah, so I guess this goes back to, um, I had been a Bosch guy for the longest time. Mm -hmm. um, really, I don't have anything bad to say about it other than it can be difficult to find all of their equipment in like the big box stores and stuff like that where you might need to get something. My friend who helped me design the batteries and the power system mm -hmm. works for a company that is affiliated with um, Ryobi mm -hmm. uh, amongst other brands. They have the, uh, all the nailers and stuff like that that are battery operated. Holy cow. So those are all really helpful. So 
especially, you know, in an RV, nails fall out, trim falls <laughs> off. You what know, are you talking about? You that know how never that goes. happens. You know how that goes. It happens here, too. It doesn't matter how much you pay for your room. Right, yeah. Uh, so I got a big battery charger for it and a bunch of batteries for that. So, yeah, I'm kind of I'm mostly split between Ryobi and uh, Bosch. Mm -hmm. uh, the Milwaukee ones here are solely for my heated jacket. Yes. Yes, you yes. said heated jacket. <laughs> yes, I said heated jacket. It's 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 kind of absurd, but it's wonderful. Right. It's wonderful when it's cold. So I just plug them all in and they they're charged. Yeah. You know, so and out. they all live they all live right there, and you got plenty of juice down here. Yep. So also down here, uh, like in your previous RV, you have clamps clamped to uh, cross members and yep. bars and beams. It's a fantastic way to store clamps. There's more over here, but when you need clamps, you need clamps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, those for something, no. so yeah. this isn't really storage, but it is organization uh, label maker. Yes, again, he that has is. labels on everything. We're going to go through all of this stuff in the electrical episode, and then there's uh, networking <coughs> stuff over there. You can see an entire rack behind his shoulder there. Uh, but everything is labeled, and it is wonderful. And label makers make that possible. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. And you also have a lot of sensors down here. Let's talk about those. Yes. So uh, you have temperature sensors. Temperature and humidity sensor. Yep. I have a bunch of these throughout the rig. And so which brand I, is that one? I, I don't remember the name. Oh. It, it, this was an off-brand. Okay, so it's not like a it's, system like the it's Nest a, uh, Fire. Right. So, yeah. yeah, no, this is a Nest Protect. Okay. Um, and I have these throughout the rig as well. These tie in with my Hubitat. Um, Hub Hold on Hubitat? Hubitat Evolution. Evolution, yeah, Habitat. So it's like Habitat, but H U B. Yes. Yeah, that's clever. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's kind of a D, uh, DIY uh, home automation system. Oh, okay. And it all runs locally. Okay. So unlike a lot of them, like things like Smart Things runs yeah. mostly in the cloud. I've used Wise stuff, and it's all cloud based. Yeah. yeah. It runs on the hub locally. Oh. And the only thing you have to worry about per se is accessing the hub. Right. But they even offer a service for But you don't need an internet connection. It it's all Correct. local network. It's that's, all local execution, cool. local network. So it's all super fast, which is nice. Um, we use that for our alarm system. Yeah. Basically what it is is we use, you know, contact sensors on the doors, yep. have the temperature, humidity, you know, <clears throat> for monitoring that. So I have a dashboard so I can see temperatures throughout the rig and just yep. give a better idea of things. Um, and then, like you said, you have the Nest Home Protect. Um, yep. That's a fire and carbon monoxide. Correct. Right? So you've yep. got that one down here, and you've got a couple inside as well. Yep. That's I believe I have a total of five of them. I nice. One bed, one in each bedroom. I have one in my office. I have one in the main living space, and then I have the one down here. Very cool. Very nice. Uh, what I else? What else you have hiding down here? Uh, one thing I do like is <clears throat> all of the exposed pipes. <laughs> Yes. Give you a lot of great places to zip tie cords and cables and yes. all sorts of stuff. So that's actually so that one there that is covered in Ethernet cables yeah. is your drain for your half for bath my, or your no, sink. No, that's for my sink and my full bath. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we're under the bedroom right here. Yep. And the one the the one right in front of you, uh -huh. which you can't actually see on the camera. I that's think what? that's actually my shower. Okay. And I'd say the one back there is the black. Gotcha. The toilet. Very cool. Um, but yeah, New Horizons is really good about uh, organizing, you know, and really, and they try to, they try to put all the cables in wire loom and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and just try to keep things, you know, put together as as nice as they can, you know. Yeah. Right? RVs are just full of wire. I mean, <laughs> when you try to condense an entire house that has essentially two power systems yeah. into this kind of spot with water and all that, it just there's not a lot of places to put things, and they're very good about where they can run things and yeah. and you know and hide it. And of course, they let they let things just run across here in the basement because that's where a lot of this comes, you know, to. Yeah, from. but it's nice to have something to kind of tie <clears throat> into. But yes, yeah, this has been very helpful for running the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's something. Up. There's um, a guide for your saw. On oh the, yeah, on this thing? is a. It's yeah, it's a Craig. Um, uh, circular saw uh, thing that it just allows you to hold a straight edge along uh, a piece yeah. of wood here yeah. as you as you're cutting. Right. Uh, use it occasionally, but yeah. I bolted so, it to the ceiling. So I wanted to point that out just because you know it's a big flat empty expanse on the ceiling. You can still use it for stuff. Yeah. You can still hold things. Yeah. You have to. You just have to be creative. You have to know. I mean, again, what I did was I asked New Horizons. I'm, I'm like, okay, tell me what the construction mm -hmm. of this from here to the floor is. Right. Because I don't want to put a screw through my wood floor. <laughs> right. And 
he told me exactly how much space. It was like an inch and a half of foam in there and okay. then the lawn and all that. And I'm like, great, thank you. Cool. And, <laughs> tell and me what I what I know to work with. I'm like, okay, I'll keep the sh screws short. <laughs> and the uh, final thing I want to point out down here, you have a camera in your basement. I do. It's a, That's a little weird. Uh, you know, <laughs> I had an extra camera. I actually have another extra camera. Ah, what brand of cameras do you like? These are the Unify cameras, okay. Unify Protect. Uh, are those the they, same ones you have outside? Yes. Okay. They are um, fully local. Okay. So, oh, so again, again no they don't, cloud, no they internet don't have, needed. Right. They okay. don't need that. Um, obviously, I can still access them remotely because of the way everything's set up, but they record locally so I don't have to pipe tons and tons of data, right. which is actually very important because the ones outside are 4K. So they oh, are very large files. Yeah. Um, they all store locally uh, on the equipment here. Um, we use, actually I use uh, an SSD, a okay. four, four terabyte SSD in there mm -hmm. uh, so that I don't have any issues when we're driving down the road with bouncing right. the yeah, like mechanical hard drive. Platters would be bad. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, every everything that we have in here uh, storage-wise, mm -hmm. data storage-wise, is all SSD. Computers, right. you know, everything like that. Um, and frankly, I don't turn them off when yeah. we drive because yeah. I don't need to. Yeah, there's no, no reason to. Nope. Uh, so I'm going to back out of here. I don't know if anyone realized, but I am uh, crouching in over top of the <laughs> over top of the freezer. Slide. But there's quite a bit of room here. Uh, I did the door just banged me, and I wanted to point this out. Um, so you said you were having trouble. Uh, there is a gravity feed inlet. Yes. There. And he also, oh, they're gone. They were over there earlier. Yeah. You had jerry cans with water. So if you need to get water, like when right. there's if no water available. Right, if we're boondocking and we have water, we use those. But trying to stick a flexible hose down into the jerry can, into the very bottom corner and get all that water when the pump is sucking it up. Yeah. I found it, it was annoying me. So I went and grabbed some PEX, which is generally fairly rigid, and that stuff is. And I just made myself a little adapter that I can just stick in the bottom corner of the jerry can and sucks the water right out and I very little effort there. Yep, so this is it. So this is the quick connect right here and then a nice rigid piece of PEX. Yep. So you can just put it down in the corner of the jerry can. Very cool. And again, it's got the broom holders. Yeah, broom holders <laughs> for the win every time. Awesome. So the final thing you wanted to talk about was uh, this custom little water filtration thing you set up in here. This is uh, a clear source Ultra. So it's their three three canister thing. Mm -hmm. The way they have it generally built is that it's designed to hook into your hose and kind of sit outside. Right. Um, I redid it so that it connected straight to the PEX in line on the system. Um, so where yeah. is the incoming water? Incoming water is right here. Okay. This is just a valve for bleeding off pressure when I need to change the cartridges because okay. Because it's built to be hooked up to hoses, there's no pressure release valve. Gotcha. So I have to release the valve. I just put a solo cup under there and okay. <coughs> yeah. drain out the pressure. Yep. Um, so water flows this way through and then back out here. And then I put in this little uh, water meter, which allows me to know exactly how much water has flowed through, this, through the filters so mm -hmm. that I know when I need to change the filters yeah because otherwise you're just guessing right you really like it's been how many months it's like it's like yeah it's like two thousand gallons is what it's rated for yeah you know? and you, then, how long is two thousand gallons? yeah what's two thousand gallons yeah <laughs> that, that, so that i put my i put my work. label on there and then i and i go for it and you know usually i'm 500 gallons over by the time i actually yeah. replace it you know it's probably less over than most people when they get around to replace it, it really them. is yeah. and i've noticed that they tend to go longer yeah. the other thing is if we're boondocking it actually runs the water through twice so it runs the water when you fill the tank and then it runs the oh. water throughout of the tank so to me those are kind of like gimmies you know those huh. you know, you're not really capturing a whole lot more when you're doing right that. right um, it's relatively clean water yes and then you can't really see it back in here but we also beyond that have uh the akuva uv filter system oh yeah and that is filtering a single faucet by the sink and then the ice maker and water dispenser in the fridge okay uh, other than those two uh everything else is on the house we started without this we started with just the single canister one they gave me mm -hmm. i got somewhere was taking a shower and the water was like was chlorinated just it was just awful so i felt like i was taking a shower in a pool <laughs> you know in a, in, a, in, a, in a commercial pool and i'm like okay 
time to get some filters. Wow. So yeah. So the then, filter wasn't filtering out heavily chlorinated <coughs> water. Right. It wasn't okay. really. So it doing, wasn't the filter that was the filter it. that it was that it had was probably just a sediment filter. It gotcha. wasn't you know it was yeah. more more in line with just a nicer version of the little blue capsule that yep. a lot of people have. Just a particle. That's yeah. what I have. What are you saying? <laughs> they don't work that well. No, they don't. I'm lazy. Yeah. I have, um, I have another filter on the inside. But. This is honestly fantastic water. And yeah. yeah, the filters are a little expensive, but I've decided that water quality is yeah. important. Yep. All righty. So that is, uh, that's all of the storage stuff. And we kind of bled into water there as well. So uh, thank you for that quick little tour. And uh, we're going to come back to this RV um, in about 30 seconds for us, but probably a few days for you guys. Uh, and we're going to look at all of the internet setup. And then we're going to look at all of the electrical stuff. And that is uh, where my brain shuts off. <laughs> and I'm really just going to let him talk us through that. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, stick around for more episodes on this rather impressive setup. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good one.